Hi everyone! This is a small follow-up from my previous video in which I showed my process of capturing the International Space Station. I was asked how the processing and stacking goes after the capture. It's a relatively short and simple process, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reprocess a photo and share my screen with you so that you can see all the steps. And I've done another pass since I recorded that video, but for the sake of continuity, I'm going to reprocess that same capture that I took in the previous video. Right, after the capture, I left off at PIP, Planetary Imaging Preprocessor. So that's where I'm going to pick it back up. I've taken my recording, which is in SCR format, into PIP, and I'm going to check the ISS box. I'm just going to let PIP do its thing with default settings, which will crop every frame with ISS in it and then output them as single TIFF images. So I'm going to go to Do Processing and click Start. Now I've opened Auto Stackert, exclamation point three, and I'm going to have a look through my frames to see if there are any that I can stack. They are single frames, so I'm going to go to File and Open Images to select them. So notice how the quality and the apparent size of the ISS changes through the frames. It gets bigger, it gets brighter, and I always find the best frames are around the time when it was sort of directly overhead, as that's where there's least amount of atmospheric turbulence, there's best light. And I can see even in these small thumbnails that these frames are pretty much the best of the bunch. So what I'm looking for is a succession of frames that have a similar timestamp to make sure that they can stack correctly. These look the best. So I've got 13065, 13064, 13059, 13054. Okay, so let's select all of these. Right, and I'm going to click Open, and those are going to be the frames that I'm going to stack. So I've selected Planet here. Um, I always keep my noise or bus number here on 6 anyway, so now I'm going to click Analyze, and this is my quality graph. When it comes to deciding how many frames to stack, I look at the quality graph here, and if there's a big drop in quality like this, I will stop there, so I'll select the frames that come before it. Uh, in this case, I'll choose something like 25%. It's not much, but it's better than, you know, having blurry flip frames in the mix. Now this option here, Normalize Stack, can sometimes really make a difference. Try what works best for your particular capture. If I have photos like this where there's a particularly bright area, I'll select it, but if it's mostly evenly illuminated, I'll skip it. We're in something called a high beta angle where only two out of the four panels are visible to us, and the radiators here are facing us and they're really, really bright. So I will leave this checked as well as the RGB align. So now I'm going to add my alignment points and click Stack. Now there won't be very much to do in Registax because I don't have that much data to pull detail from, but I'll do a little bit of wavelet sharpening anyway, just a touch on the first slider to add a bit of sharpness and number five, if I can get away with it. And then I'm going to save my image as ISS and hit save. Now I've taken my image to GIMP. Lots of people use Photoshop or Lightroom, which are probably better and more versatile, but I use GIMP because it's free. Here, the first thing I'm going to do is crop the image because inevitably, um, there will be some stacking artifacts from Auto Stackert in the corners. If I lift the exposure, you'll see them right there, see? So what I'm going to do is just crop it so they don't show up in the final image. And then I will resize the image. 
Now, I mainly post these on social media, you know, Facebook and Instagram. And as you know, as soon as you upload them there, they can turn out like a potato. So one of the ways to soften that is to try and save my images in PNG format and resize them to 2048 pixels on the longest edge. So I will scale them like this. And then hopefully once they upload to social media, they will retain some of their quality. Now I will lightly stretch the histogram like you would with the deep space photo, just to bring out the panels a little bit from the shadows. And while we're at it, also bring out the shadows a touch. So shadows here, a little bit less. There. And now I will just add some noise reduction. And that's it, ready for export. And that's it. As you can see, it really is a quick and easy process. Um, I hope that was helpful and I really enjoyed all the comments and seeing pictures that people have taken following the previous video. So please keep them going and clear skies, everyone.